I made a breakthrough this morning that I'm excited to share with my friends and anyone who watches. I took the augmented course in January. And I've been toiling with fabric. I'm a non-coder. I'm trying to figure out how to get it off the ground. I made a breakthrough this morning, and today I'll walk you through those steps. So I got a blog post that lists the steps. I talk about how this is a step-by-step -step procedure for people that already know what fabric is all about. But if you don't, spend 15 seconds here. So uh, this guy's augmented to integrate AI into life and work. That's interesting. There's these tools, Extract Wisdom, Simplify, Essay. I wonder what those are all about. Augment yourself. My approach to AI from security guru Daniel Meisler, the architecture of the full guys, the outputs. Build and wield your own personal AI ecosystem. I wonder what that could do. All right. Uh, from there, there's an awesome uh, interview with David Bomble, also from January. And it talks about, uh, you know, this guy motivates me, David Bomble. And, you know, he's motivated by Daniel Meisler. Uh, direct quote. That's what it looks like. I mean, you're, what you're doing is insane. Normal productivity is this level, and you've gone crazy with AI. So that's certainly, uh, check it out and see if, if you want to follow these steps. And then more is unpacked in the open source project on GitHub called Fabric. You can get into the what and the why and see what it's all about. AI isn't a thing. It's a magnifier of a thing. It's about human creativity. And how can we tackle these challenges with these components? in the Fabric ecosystem. So before you can get into that, you need to get Fabric off the ground, install the client, and get it running. Let's do that today. I've never used Visual Studio Code until the past couple of weeks. And before that, I hadn't used PyCharm, and I, and I tried that out. So uh, I'm new to this. If you're new to this, don't be intimidated. You can do it. Just follow these steps, and we'll learn together. So step one is to get Visual Studio Code installed. I'm going to click to download it, and we'll let that happen. There it goes. This is an integrated development environment in IDE. I had not really used one other than Visual Basic in uh, Excel's IDE for macros uh, in my accounting work. All right, that's the welcome. Great. Go to my steps. So we've installed Visual Studio Code. That was easy. We need to get an open AI key. So uh, I've got a link to where you can find more information about that, and I've got mine open right here. You can see, I, see I've been playing around, and I've spent about $4 uh, so far since April. So it's not free, but uh, you, know, you can do your own cost analysis. I have minimal hands-on keyboard experience, which I talk about here. And if I can do it, you can do it. So this is interesting. I got it to work on two Macs this morning. This is my th third attempt on a second uh, on the second Mac, and uh, let's see if the instructions I followed work, uh, right? So we got to, now that we have an IDE, an integrated development environment, we need this source code that Daniel Meisler has made public in GitLab. So this is only the second project that I'd ever downloaded, um, so let's do that now. Download the zip. 93 megs. All right. So I want to kind of extract that, and I'm going to put it in a special projects folder. I'm going to call it VS Code for Visual Studio Code, but you could name it whatever you want. There it is. Now we want to open this from uh, VSC. And I'll go back to my instructions. Download the zip, make a folder, extract the zip, and put it in the folder. Now open it in Visual Studio Code, and you hit the Start Open button, although I had to close that welcome screen. We'll figure it out. So you want to be careful. You don't want to click here. You want to hit the arrow and click here. Open. Yes, I trust the authors. And we're in. We can see Fabric Main is the parent, and we're interested in the client right now. Back to the instructions. Open a new terminal. Well, what is a terminal, and how do I do that? I learned that you can go terminal new. And there you go. We'll get the instructions beside the IDE here.
So we want to, right now we're in the directory fabric main and we want to get to client main. So we do CD client. See, and now we're in the client directory. Install poetry. working it worked now I've had this fail but uh, let's see if it works poetry install actually it was on this computer so I don't think it is gonna work but I'll show you what happens poetry install doesn't like it that command is not found what do I do well I took that code and the error message and I put it through chat GPT and it taught me what was going on and it said hey the second Mac you're on prefers when you call it Python 3.12. And it had me diagnose what version I was running. So I think if I run that command, it's going to work. Let's grab it. That worked. All right, we'll keep going. So now we have some instructions I can copy and paste. And as you can see, in uh, this is what Daniel Meisler wrote in GitHub. And he uh, you know, put a path that you need to customize to your computer. And so I've customized it for mine here. Also, on Windows, you're going to use uh, bash RC. But in Mac, you need to cu customize it to ZSHRC. Copy. Paste. That worked. And now we'll put in this command. And fabric py is this Python script uh, right there. But uh, this doesn't even need to be, uh, th that's not important. What's important is I put in this command. Let's go. That worked. All right, let's activate a virtual environment. Command not found. Aha. If 9.1 fails, try 9.2. And if they both fail, uh, like I said, ChatGPT taught me what was going wrong. I gave it the script, I gave it the error message, and I had a conversation with it. That worked. Now, we need to make a new file under the fabric parent, we're going to call it .env. And it made that little gear appear. And we have some text to type in here with our API key. All right, I'm going to stop recording, pop that in, and be right back. All right, I've got my API key on the clipboard and I'm ready to put it in. Let's plug in the API key. And I just close this to save it. My developer friend taught me that. All right, what's next? All right, let's see what's going on. Ha, it worked, nice. So this is the help menu for Fabric. Now let's set it up. Put in my API key, it's downloading patterns. You'll learn what those are in the, as you learn more about this project. My focus right now is just to get you, get you going. All right, let's try to use uh, a pattern to write an essay. So as you can see, there's this list of capabilities. When we saw the guy's head and those uh, capabilities he had floating around him, those are these patterns. And they're 
They each do different things. It's more capable and there's more of an ability to chain them together than with the web interface to chat GPT or BARD, for example. It's showing that AI isn't chat GPT. It's, it's more. Okay, I'm going to grab this command that wants to use the write essay pattern right there. So write me three paragraphs on why cybersecurity GRC is awesome and underrated. Provide tips for people with diverse backgrounds, such as accounting, to break in. And an essay is now being produced. So there's my big breakthrough. It's not that an essay is being produced because ChatGPT could already do that. It's that I was able to establish this uh, capability for this ecosystem. We demonstrated one small fraction, but there's much more capability to unlock. And it was a lot of uh, trial and error to get to this point. I sure have a real appreciation for software development and the blood, sweat, and tears that it goes into making quality code. And uh, you know, I hope uh, this helps uh, my friends break through to um, get the thing working so that we can uh, st you know, elevate from here. This is just day one. Thanks for watching. Let me know how it's going for you in the comments. And good luck.